This is Joe Biden, the current resident of the United States. Recently, under his watch, the Chinese were able to infiltrate the airspace over the continental United States. On January 28, 2023, this Chinese spy balloon entered the United States airspace over the Aleutian Islands, then traveled over Canadian airspace over the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and British Columbia, then re-entered the United States over Idaho and Montana. Four days later, on February 4th, it was finally shot down over the coast of South Carolina. If you ask somebody to draw an X at every place where our sensitive missile defense sites, our nuclear weapons infrastructure, our nuclear weapons sites are, you would put them all along this path. Uh, clearly, this was an attempt by China to gather information to defeat our command and control of our sensitive missile defense and nuclear weapon sites. And while this was an international incident that put our national security at risk, Joe Biden did not give formal remarks about it until February 16th. That's 16 days after the balloon was first sighted and 12 days after the shoot down. When one of these high altitude surveillance balloons entered our airspace over the continental United States earlier in the month, I gave the order to shoot it down as soon as it would be safe to do so. The military advised against shooting it down over land because of the sheer size of it. It was the size of multiple school buses and it posed a risk to people on the ground if it was shot down where people lived. However, that statement does not seem to hold water. Because days earlier, the Washington Post reported that the United States had been tracking the balloon from its launch point on Hainan Island in China. And if that was true, and if we knew exactly where it was from the get-go, then we could have shot it down safely over the Bering Sea where there was zero risk to anyone on the ground. And considering that there are less than 44,000 people who live in the entire Yukon, and less than 46,000 in the Northwest Territories, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the US or Canadian military could have figured out where to shoot it down without hurting anybody. Instead, we tracked it closely, we analyzed its capabilities, and we learned more about how it operates. And because we knew its path, we were able to protect sensitive sites against collection. I mean, sure, it flew over Montana and Missouri, where we have nuclear weapons, <laughs> but it's fine. We protected them. Pentagon says that they were able to use some countermeasures that, that blocked or limited the ability of China to extract uh, information from this balloon. Do you buy that? No, and I, I mean, certainly you don't either. Here, here's the thing that's, that's interesting. The administration says there was nothing for them to gain here. This was quite a risk by China, quite a calculation that they would take a balloon, put it up in China, take it across the United States where it's clearly going to be discoverable by us. So even though we should have never let it enter our airspace in the first place, the excuse from Democrats is that we needed to wait until it was safe. The president and the United States military did what they did that is, in my opinion, very just and very uh, defensible. Not very convincing if you ask me. Here's a better take from the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Turner. Yeah, well, you know, clearly the president taking it down over the Atlantic is sort of like the quarterback, sort of like tackling the quarterback after the game is over. Um, the, the satellite had completed its mission. This should never have been allowed uh, to enter the United States, and it never should have been allowed to complete its mission. And that's exactly right. We allowed this aircraft to travel across the United States for no reason. But it's okay because it was blown up eventually. They saw that to blow that thing up or to take that thing down over land would cause challenges. And we know from the debris field over the ocean that it was miles long. I think I heard seven miles long. But there didn't need to be a seven mile long debris field. Because according to retired Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, we didn't have to wait until it was over the ocean or blow it out of the sky. Despite what the Pentagon says, there were methods available to bring that balloon down using air, airborne lasers, where you basically punch the balloon, you bring it down in a controlled rate into an area which would not have required a catastrophic uh, explosion of the device. So that, that opportunity was missed. Fact check true. And according to Schaefer, NASA currently has this airborne laser technology installed on two of their aircraft. But instead of utilizing it to bring these balloons down in a controlled way, we fired a short-range air-to-air missile at it, which helped create a wider area of debris. Since I came to office, we've developed the ability to identify, track, and study high-altitude surveillance balloons connected with the Chinese military. 
Hard to properly study an object you've blown to pieces with a missile, but <laughs> whatever, Joe. Last week, in the immediate aftermath of the incursion by China's high-altitude balloon, our military, through the North American Aerospace Defense Command, so-called NOR NORAD, closely scrutinized uh, the, uh, our airspace, including enhancing our radar to pick up more slow-moving objects above our country. And after enhancing their radar, so-called NORAD picked up three more high-altitude airborne objects. One over Alaska on February 10th, the Yukon in Canada on February 11th, and over Lake Huron on February 12th. The intelligence community's current assessment is that these three objects were most likely balloons tied to private companies, recreation, or research institutions studying weather or conducting other scientific research. I gave the order to take down these three objects due to hazards to civilian commercial air traffic and because we could not rule out the surveillance risk of sensitive facilities. So the balloons were either conducting harmless scientific research or they were a surveillance risk. Or maybe it was the house from Pixar's Up. Who knows? But just in case, Joe Biden ordered them to be blown out of the f***ing sky with heat-seeking sidewinder missiles. Whoa! <laughs> It was the only way to be sure. Later, after Biden's remarks, Aviation Week reported that one of the three unidentified objects may have been a Pico balloon that was launched by the Northern Illinois Bottle Cap Balloon Brigade. The NIBBB posted on its website that Pico balloon K9YO-15 was missing in action and would have been flying over the Yukon at the same time an F-22 spotted and shot down a UFO. Now, if in fact it was a Pico balloon, did it present a hazard to civilian commercial aircraft? Probably not. Space.com quoted Douglas Malnanti, an amateur radio operator who launches Pico balloons, as saying, The FAA has guidelines about what can and can't fly, and Pico balloons are well inside the safety threshold, so they don't pose a danger to aircraft, nor to people on the ground. So, will we ever know exactly what it was that we actually shot down? <laughs> Probably not, because the United States and Canadian governments have called off the searches of the shot down objects, and they will likely never be recovered. Womp womp. So after Republicans criticized the Biden administration for allowing a Chinese surveillance balloon to track across most of the United States, it was reported that it supposedly happened under the orange man. According to the Washington Post, the Defense Department notified Congress of several previous incursions of U.S. airspace by Chinese surveillance balloons, with earlier sightings near Texas, Florida, Hawaii, and Guam. A senior administration official, speaking on the condition of anonymity because of the sensitivity of the issue, said that the previous occurrences were discovered after the Trump administration left office. So two things to point out here. First, notice that the Washington Post reported that the sightings were near Texas, Florida, Hawaii, and Guam. Near does not mean directly over. Second, the Trump administration was not informed about these balloons in real time, so how was Trump supposed to respond to a thing he wasn't aware of? And of course, that fact didn't stop Democrats like Senator Cory Booker from lying about it. Uh, I, I think what is... It's problematic when uh, for Democrat or Republican have one standard for one president and another standard for another president. Mm -hmm. We should remember that this is now known to have happened under the Trump administration multiple times. Again, you can't criticize President Trump for not shooting down a thing that neither he nor the U.S. military didn't know about until months or years later. And so to create another standard for Biden, when Trump, it seems, allowed this to go over the United States, is just uh, a, a bit hypocritical. You hear the language, right? Trump allowed this to go over the United States. You mean the thing that he didn't know about? Come on, man. Also, when and where did these incursions supposedly take place? Well, the Biden administration will never make that information public because actual facts could benefit Trump and Biden can't afford for that to happen. Air Force General Glenn Van Herc, head of NORAD and NORTHCOM, claims that U.S. intelligence determined the previous flights after the fact based on additional means of collection of intelligence without offering further details on whether that might be cyber espionage, 
telephone intercepts, or human sources. The general also did not provide details on previous balloons, including where over the United States they flew. So to recap, under Joe Biden, military intelligence detected three objects, blasted them from the sky, and they can't definitively say what they shot down. But under President Trump, that same military is totally sure that spy balloons flew over or near the United States, but they didn't detect them until after Trump left office. Makes sense to me, what's your problem? And what makes this even stupider is that the Biden administration has actually tried to make the claim that they had somehow prepared for these incursions years ago. Here's John Kirby. The president also instructed the intelligence community to take a broad look at the phenomenon of unidentified aerial objects. Indeed, President Biden conducted the first ever daily intelligence briefing session devoted to this phenomenon back in June of 2021. So Joe Biden and the Brandon administration was briefed about this phenomenon 20 months ago, and yet they still failed to stop a spy balloon from traveling across the mainland. Great job, geniuses. And if their argument is, oh, well, we didn't want to shoot it down because we could have maybe hurt somebody on the ground, and they aren't going to use existing airborne laser technology to disable these balloons and bring them down to Earth in a more controlled way, then that means that there's nothing stopping the Chinese from doing it again and again. Well, unless, of course, it's a harmless Mylar balloon from Party City, then it's shoot first, ask questions later. On that note, that's it for now. Follow me on Twitter at Don't Walk Run, and be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. A special thanks to Tony Schaefer for giving me some additional insight into the whole airborne laser thing. It's pretty cool. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you next time. If there is a next time.